Hello everyone, welcome back to Tabletop Bookshelf. So today I'm going to count down the top five best-selling horror solo games in the shop. Uh, so let's get to it, let's dig into it. The first game we have is Dead Letter Society. Uh, this is a unique journaling or letter writing game where you play as a vampire communicating to other vampires through the secret society. Uh, your letters drive the action and you pursue your ambitions, you uncover the society's hidden motives, and the game adapts to your preferred style. So you could play it as a gothic romance, you could play it, you could lean into the horror, play it post-apocalyptic, it offers you lots of different options. This is a tarot-driven journaling game, uh, so that guides your decisions and the letter writing though can make it a really immersive experience. It is prime. It is uh, maybe best experienced as a two-person game, but you can. There are rules for playing it uh, solo. This is all done by artist creator Rory Monfort, who uh, is the game designer, the illustrator. All of these wonderful illustrations are hers. Uh, you can see it's just full of prompts. Uh, and then at the end, different different sets, so you can really jump into the game. So uh, check out Dead Letter Society, and if you want to, if you are want to exp go beyond vampires, talk about werewolves, you can pick up Almanac of the Sanguine Past, which is her newest book. And this one, this one is even thicker. This was a, this is a meaty book as it as it was. This one is even thicker. Whole new set of prompts, new illustrations. Uh, and fully compatible. So check these out. Number four best-selling horror solo game is Carved by the Garden from Cassie Mothwin. A folk horror solo RPG. And what I like about this game is the journaling experience is part of the story. So you are creating your last journal as someone who is exploring this forest and going deeper into it and exploring the horrors within both the forest and yourself. Uh, it's played with a deck of cards. You can see there's lots of prompts in here. You also can use a stacking block tower. So there is this other mechanic going on as well. A lot of really, really creepy, horrific prompts in here. Really worth digging into and definitely uh, can do a few playthroughs on. So check out Carved by the Garden from Cassie Mothwin. Next on the list, we have Lighthouse at the End of the World. This comes from Ken Lowry under the banner of Bannerless Games. And uh, this one, as you can probably tell, you play, you take on the role of a lighthouse keeper at a lighthouse at the end of the world. It's a haunted lighthouse, of course. Uh, but, and you play through this through your experience, through your seasons there, attending to this lighthouse, communicating with the horrors or the ghosts within. Lots of prompts here. It's it's card driven from a deck of playing cards. But you might not make it out. There are ill-fated conclusions. You might become one of those ghosts uh, on the lighthouse. And you could potentially play it through again, communicate with that ghost again. Lighthouse at the end of the world. This is from Ken Lowry. There is no peace in this place. You may well die. All right, number two. Number two best-selling horror book is going to be What Lies Beneath. This is uh, a solo dungeon crawler. And you can see as I flip through it here, it's kind of like a choose-your-own-adventure book. There are choices, but there's also skill checks involved. So there are different mechanics for... Uh, just a kind of a straight dice roll skill check, but there's also a unique uh, way that they do dexterity checks where you're kind of flicking dice. Uh, this is a little bit more dark fantasy, but it definitely is horror. You start off with this kind of terrible condition happening, so there's this body horror element that is running through this game. And it's kind of like Dark, dark Souls. It's You can die and you uh, come back and you have experience points based on what happened the first time around. So you can get a few playthroughs on this one as well. What Lies Beneath, Chris Scafidi, under the banner of Fervent Workshop.
And then our number one best-selling horror solo game. This will come to no surprise if you check out the shop or uh, uh, follow me on social media. But this is Whispers in the Walls from Pandion Games. This is probably my top recommendation if people are curious about uh, solo journaling games. There's a ton of ton of prompts packed in here. It's very accessible. You all you need is a deck of playing cards, lots of replayability, and you can play through a session of this in 15 minutes. Uh, but you take on the role of a paranormal investigator, investigating some horrific thing, a murder perhaps. You build a deck and you draw cards to determine what happens during your encounter. And things can go bad as well. There's there's the spades, which are the hollows, and uh, even more horrific things can happen. Uh, lots of replayability here. A uh, great way if you're if you're curious about solo journaling games and you want to figure out if that's for if it's for you and you like uh, horror or crime uh, or supernatural type stories, just get Whispers in the Walls. Try it out. Uh, great way to get into this genre and uh, our number one best-selling horror solo game at Tabletop Bookshelf. So uh, thanks if you've been following this all the way through. Let's bring out let's bring out the the pile here, like a little fashion show, right? Like everyone's coming on out at the end here. So uh, what do we do here at Tabletop Bookshelf? We we support all of these independent uh, publishers and creators uh, that are creating solo and independent tabletop role playing games. We try to give them as broad a platform as possible, uh, both from promoting the work and getting that work, the physical work, into people's hands and onto gaming tables everywhere. So if you uh, like what we're doing here, please follow, subscribe, tell your friends about Tabletop Bookshelf, check out the shop. That's it, the top five solo horror games at Tabletop Bookshelf. Thanks, have a good night.